Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And we get asked a lot of little questions about facial oils and how to create facial oils. And what you might have found is that it's not as easy as you first thought to put one of these products together. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just mix a few oils together and there I've got my facial oil. But what they quickly discover is that if you don't mix the formula the right way, you're gonna end up with a product that leaves your face quite shiny and feeling very, very greasy. So how do these more elite brands come out with these absolutely beautiful feeling facial oils? It's all in the ingredients you choose and the way you put it together. So let me show you how it's done. I'll explain to you about the different ingredient selection processes and we have a starting formula for you to work from. And you can also create some really elegant facial oils through our Create Cosmetic Formulas program where some of the hard work and guessing about selections is already taken care of for you. Okay, so one of the first things I want to explain about making a good facial oil is you need to use some light esters. And I'm gonna show you why. So basically this is isoamyl laurate here, but coco caprylate is also a really popular choice. As you can see already, it's, it's very see-through. Uh, it actually feels very, very light on the skin. And if you have a look, it doesn't leave any residual shine or greasiness. And these make a big base of the formula. Now they have such a light feeling, you can see there's, there's hardly any shine or any gloss from that material. It goes straight in, it certainly doesn't feel heavy or greasy. But it doesn't give any lasting emolliency either, so it's not the only material that we would use, but it definitely makes up a large majority of the product so that we don't get that gloss. If you want to compare a vegetable oil by comparison, I'll just show you here. If I'm using an oil, this is just a plant oil, you can see the amount of high gloss it gives off. And yeah, it feels quite oily on the skin. So we don't make the majority of the formula out of plant oils. We make the majority of the formula out of these light esters that don't have that same sort of shine or gloss to them and certainly don't have the same heaviness to them. So I've got that measured out here. And to this, I'm going to add other oils or oil soluble actives that are gonna build the story of my formula. Here I'm using some Bariti oil. Now this is really rich in antioxidants and I'm choosing this one because it's making up part of the story of this formula. Now I'm only using about 10% of this and I'm going to mix this in with my ester. Now it's also really important here that you learn a little bit about polarity of oils. So one of the worst things I could do in this particular product is mix my esters and plant oils with silicons or other hydrocarbons. Now silicons and hydrocarbons uh, get picked or tried because they have a really light, silky skin feel. But they would completely separate out into different phases in this formula because although they're all oils, they're not compatible oils to go together. So here I'm using plant oil and ester, and they go together really nicely. Now to this, I am going to add some antioxidant. I'm also going to add, I'm gonna add an active here called L22. Now this is one of my favorite materials to add into oily serums. If you can't get this direct from the supplier, then you could use some squalene, but it's certainly not gonna give you the same benefits that this L22 does. The whole story behind L22 is it helps balance the skin's sebum to that of a 22 year old. So it's absolutely fantastic in dry skincare products because it will help their skin feel like it did back when they were 22, nice and hydrated and moisturized. Like I say, it's actually a very specific combination of squalene and uh, phytosterols in here that gives it this fantastic effect. Uh, if you didn't have access to that, you could use some squalene, but you're just not gonna get exactly the same results uh, that you would from using this material here. Uh, now here I have some sea buckthorn oil. And to this, I'm gonna add some coenzyme Q10. Again, you could add all sorts of oil-based uh, actives or oil-soluble actives. Just make sure that they're uh, either in plant oils or in esters so that they all come together nicely in your final facial oil. Now, I'm just mixing the coenzyme Q10 powder first in a little bit of oil. You can see there's some little grainy bits. I need to get them all solvated out in the oil before I add this to the bulk product. 
Okay, now I'm going to add this into my bulk product. I'm going to give that a stir to combine and I'm just going to add a little bit of essential oil. And there we have our facial oil. Now again, because the majority has been that isoamyl laurate, you'll see that when I add it to my skin, instead of it looking all glossy and oily, it actually ends up with a beautiful glowing finish. It's not oily or greasy to touch. And because I've used some of those plant oils, it has a beautiful cushiony feeling on the skin. And again, this is the type of finish we really look for compared to that heavy, greasy, oily look that you get just from plant oils. Like I say, there's two really good esters that are quite widely available, even in small supply, and that's your isoamyl laurate, your dermophil sensol, and also your coco caprile, your Cetiol C5. These two materials should make up the majority of your base formula. And you only need one or the other in your formulation. I've also added in some oil soluble actives and oil based materials that tell a really good story and are really nutritive for the skin. But again, I've used plant oils in a proportion that means we don't get any extra shine on our skin from application. It feels nice and nourished absolutely not greasy and not that glossy finish you don't want. I've also added some antioxidant to help protect the plant oils in the formula and some essential oil to help it smell nice. Well there you go, that's how to build your facial oils right and as you can see there's plenty of opportunity for you to put in your own choices of materials. We also have this available in our Create Cosmetic Formulas program so that you can pick and choose materials and the program will do the calculations for you so you get it right every time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.